break our walls down release the sound of Spirit, come now, break our walls down, release the sound. Spirit, come now, break our walls down, release the sound of heaven. Spirit, come now. Break our walls down and release the sound. Of come on, you say, you say, Spirit, we're waiting on your tears. We're waiting on your tears. Somebody needs you, God. Somebody can't settle for another regular church service. Somebody needs you to break through and break the walls down, God. So we're available, Jesus. Come on. We're available, Jesus. Break our walls down, God. We're available, Jesus. Break our walls down, God. Spirit, come now. Spirit, come now. In our homes, God. With our children, God. Thank you. Some single mother needs you right now, Jesus. Some young married couple needs you right now, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Some young single woman needs you right now, Jesus. Somebody don't know how their bills are going to get paid. We need you to break the walls. God, the best praise we can give him. Y'all can bring the lights up. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's give God the best praise we can. All over this building, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Come on. Is he worthy of glory? Is he worthy of praise? All right. Let's get into it. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and stand up on your feet. Um... Y'all can mute all these loop lines and stuff. That's where all this noise is coming from. Just mute all this stuff. Amen. And uh, yeah, I got a weird thing. You know? I'm musical, so I can't, can't proceed. <laughs> Y'all forgive me, okay? Okay? Or there are some other amazing churches right in this. <laughs> wonderful churches. I, I know the pastors. They're wonderful people. You cannot forgive them. Amen. <laughs> Joshua chapter 6. Thank y'all for being here today. Amen. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for being here. We're so grateful for every person. We know there are a million churches. A million churches. Uh, 
San Antonio have a million churches. You could have went to any one of them. I thank you guys for being here today. Are you guys excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Okay, I hope y'all not tired because, man, this is, I, I, I feel like I'm getting back into my stride right now. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm getting into, I'm just now getting this little, I done worked up a lather. I think we all good right here. Worked up a little lather. <laughs> Steve, a little lather, man. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Are y'all ready to have church today? I want to help you today. Can I help you today? All right, all right, I want to help you today. Listen, we're going to start reading at verse 1. I'm, I'm going to read today because um, I need to go quick, okay? <laughs> all right, all right, y'all, y'all, but y'all follow along with me, okay? Y'all ready? Okay, we stand for the reading of the word here. So everybody standing and, and pull out whatever Bible you have, or you can read along with the screen with us, amen? Amen. Now, Jericho was tightly shut up. Because of the sons of Israel, I didn't want to do this, but it's calling out to me. Uh, sometimes God will just shut your enemies up. <laughs> Y'all didn't see that right there, right? Sometimes God will just shut the whole, just shut up. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, Jericho was tightly shut up because of the sons of Israel, and no one went out or came in. Lord Jesus how they feel about you will stop their blessing. I'm trying to help y'all. This, this is in the Bible. I ain't making this up. <laughs> because of the sons of Israel, nobody went out or came in. No blessings went out. No blessings came in. The city was locked up because of the sons of Israel. And then the Lord said to Pastor Dante, uh, put your name, my name here. Right? Okay. See, I have given Jericho into your hand with his king and all his valiant warriors. You shall march around the city, all of the men of war circling the city once. You shall do this for six days. Somebody say six days. Also, seven priests shall carry the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Covenant. Then on the seventh day, somebody say the seventh day is coming. Amen. Look at somebody and just say Sunday is coming, man. I don't care how your Monday feels, Sunday is coming. Are y'all with me today? Amen. Then on the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times. How many times? Seven. How many times? I got to wake y'all up today. I don't know what's going on with y'all. Seven times and the priest shall blow the trumpets. It shall be that when they make a long blast with the trumpet's horn and when you hear the sound of the trumpet. Oh. When you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great and the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people will go up every man straight ahead it, it means they'll run away they'll run away you won't even have to fight they'll run away so Joshua son of Nun called the priests and said to them take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests carry the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord then he said to the people go forward and march around the city and let the armed men go on before the ark of the Lord. And it was so that when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord went forward and blew the trumpets. Somebody say, blew the trumpets. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The ark followed them. The armed man went out before the priest who blew the trumpets and the rear guard came after the ark while they continued to blow the trumpets. Skip all the way down to verse 20. Skip all the way down to verse 20. Verse 20 picks up right here. So the people shouted and the priest blew the trumpets and when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat. Does anybody have some walls that need to come down in their life? 
Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We give you glory, Lord. Help me help them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. High five five people and just say the walls are coming down. 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 Amen. And y'all can bring up the house lights, please. Y'all can bring up the house lights. Okay? All right. The walls are coming down. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for taking the time to be at God Chasers Church. Does anybody believe that the walls are coming down today? Beautiful. Listen, you guys joined us at a, at, a, at, a, at a wonderful time in our church. You joined us at a wonderful time in our series. Number one, because of new things happening at God Chasers Church. I just want you to understand something. There is a fresh wind that's blowing through this church. Yeah. Pastors say that all the time. It's okay. You don't got to believe me. You're going to get caught up in it. Just a second. A fresh wind is being blown through this church. A fresh wind is about to start. Listen, it's about to start lifting some people up. All you have to do is flap. <laughs> See, oh, man, I, I, I don't want to preach this, but I, I can't. You understand that it's the wind that keeps us in the air. You keep trying to get away from the wind. You keep trying to get, but see, the, the, the birds know how to use the wind in the, oh, man. All right. Okay, so it's a fresh wind that's blowing through our church, and I believe that God is surrounding our church. He, he, he has literally drawn a circle around our church, and, and, and I'm so grateful for what he's doing, but I, I want you to know that sometimes uh, it don't feel good when God picks on you. Everybody want to be picked. Nobody want to be picked on. But I'm grateful to God that we're in a season of being picked on, amen. We're in a season where he's going to start cutting some stuff and changing some stuff. And uh, y'all can't celebrate with me. It's okay. Illy, I'm going to celebrate by myself. God's doing a new thing. I got you. So... So, so he's given me this, this, this series, and we started this series talking about uh, digging around. Remember, there was a, 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 a fruit tree that was faking. Y'all remember this? Fruit tree that was faking. It had a lot of leaves, but no fruit. Y'all tell y'all, did y'all see my little video, my little tree? It's got fruit on it already. Anyway, okay. All right, so anyway, I, I want, I want y'all to hear me right here, though. God is digging around in some of y'all's lives. That's why it feels the way it feels. That's why it feels tumultuous. It feels like things aren't in balance. In fact, uh, some of you, in, in your relationship is out of balance. Mm, you ain't going to say amen because you're sitting next to him. Just look at me. It's okay. Look at me. Some of y'all brave. You're like, mm. Your relationship is out of balance. Your job situation is out of balance. Your, your manager not here. You can shout right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, uh, listen, hear me right here. Even some of your financial circumstances are out of balance, a little out of whack. And, and what God is saying is, can you trust me to get you through this situation right here? Because it's not yea though I walk to, it's yea though I walk through. And I can trust the same God that brought me to it to get me. Okay. So he said, I'm going to start digging up around the people of God. And I was like, okay, God, okay, God. And he said, the reward of, of faithfulness is fertility. Yeah. The reward of your faithfulness, if you just stay, stay faithful while he's digging up around your life. Stay faithful while he's digging up around your relationship. Stay faithful while he's digging up around your job. Stay faithful while he's digging up around your faith. Stay faithful. He said, and the reward for faithfulness is fertility. God is about to put some fertilizer on, on some seed that you have in the ground. He showed me this. God is about to put, he said, I'm about to put some accelerant on it. He said, where, where it would normally take you two years to do it, I'm going to do it in two weeks. All of a sudden, fruit is going to start showing up. But then he also says something, because remember, we don't obfuscate that responsibility. We don't put it all on God. It's our job to build around our own mess. It's our job to fertilize our own stuff. Amen? Amen. So, so he took us, remember, he, he took us uh, to a young man named Nehemiah. And he said, I need you to build a wall. Is anybody building anything in here today? He took us to a young man and he said, I'm calling some people to build in this season. Hear me right here because this is prophetic. I need you to hear me right here because this, this might not be for everybody, but it might be for you. Okay. 
He says, he says, God has called you. I've called you to build some things in this season. He said, but the fences you build now will fortify your next season. The fences, the, the work you do now. He said, it'll protect you in the next season. The work you do now. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, I don't know. It's your work. It's the work. Maybe it's the work of starting your business. Maybe it's the work you do sowing into your family. Maybe you need to call off a day or two. I told you your boss wasn't here. And spend some time with your family. Spend some time fortifying. Okay, all right. Are y'all still with me today? I know it's getting serious now. You got to, can't be amening. You got to be thanking. Okay? He said, but that's why it frustrated you. Because you were supposed to fix it. That's why it frustrated you. That's why the last season frustrated you. That's why your relationship frustrated you. I'm, 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 I'm helping you today. That's why your, your, your job has frustrated you, he said, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to dig some stuff up around you. Is, is anybody just going to let God do his work in their life today? Just do me a favor and just say, I'm available, God. I'm available. Dig around. Dig around. Whatever you find that's not like you, throw it out. So God told me to tell you this. He's stretching out your territory, but you can't take new territory unless you have dug around and built up what was already yours. Okay? Y'all with me so far? He, he says, so, so today is about new territory, but I don't want you to think about new territory and not, and not remember uh, 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 about your responsibility. Are y'all with me today? About your responsibility to the word you hear. Oh, Jesus. About your responsibility to what you let in your gates. What you let in your ear gate. What you let in your eye gate. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to help you today. Because when you get to the new level, when you get to the new level, you got to be sure. You got to be fortified. Are y'all with me today? So, 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 so this is where we show up at Jericho. Somebody say Jericho. Now, Joshua has shown up at Jericho. There's a couple of things I want to teach you about Jericho. But first, I want to tell you about how Joshua got to Jericho. See, Joshua was the main man of Moses. He was the son of Moses. He, he came out of the camp of Moses. But see, Joshua was a go-getter. Moses... Okay, you know those kind of people... Who got saved like 30 years ago. And they don't do what they used to do. But they ain't do, they not doing no better. You know those people. Who just satisfy with church as usual. Nobody's getting saved. Nobody's changing. We still gathering here the same. However many of us. Oh yeah. All right. All right. You know those people who just get used to going around in circles and even in your relationship, you know, like y'all don't talk for six months and then they call you again and then y'all don't talk for six months and then they call you again and you're like, hey, I'm, I'm, I want to break out of this cycle. You, you know, the, see, Moses was that kind of person. He was a cyclical person. He was a cyclical person. And that's why he never had the courage to go into the place that God had promised him. Now, the, you can't disrespect Moses because he had the courage to come out of the place that he was stuck in. Are y'all with me today? You can't get mad at him. It takes courage to come out of a certain situation, but it takes a, a, another level of tenacity to say, yeah, I came out, but I'm, I'm yeah, I came out of fornication, but I, I'm not stuck right here. I, I'm, yeah, I came out of poverty, but I'm not going to be happy right here in this median area either. I need to do something. I need to invest something. And I just want to know if there's one or two people here that say, I'm not satisfied with where I am. I'm content, but I'm not satisfied. I'm content. There's a difference. I'm content, but I'm not satisfied. Sometimes my wife say, are you hungry? I say, I could eat. I'm content, but I'm not satisfied. I'm not full. Wait, oh y'all. And so, it, it, what what I want to do is get to the place where my cup runneth over. I'm okay with the cup half full. 
but I want to see my cup overflow. Is there anybody else like me in here? Okay. So Joshua, uh, so Moses has died. And Joshua has led the people of, of God across the Jordan to the promised land. Somebody say the promised land. The promised land. Okay, Some, Joshua has led his family. He has led his people. He has led himself. Where if, if single mom, I'm talking to you. He has led his family across the Jordan into the promised land. But I want you to understand something. Every time there's a win, right after the win, there's going to be a wall. Jericho is known as the walled city. Whenever you have a win, there's going to be a wall. Here, let me help you with this. Every time you, you come to the church, oh, oh, Pastor Dante, I just had this win. I pray with you because I know the wall's coming. Every time you have a win, you have a wall. And what happens is you got to remember the win when you come up to the wall. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all shouting right now. You got to remember the win. You got to remember what God did last time. You got to remember how he brought you through, how he brought you out. You got to remember that you've never been forsaken or begging bread. That's some big talk right there. But Paul said, I never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I don't got to beg from nobody. I, I serve, you know, I serve the God of the universe. What I got to beg for? I could go there. Y'all know I'm going to say I'm going to leave y'all alone on Facebook, begging. CD, I'm not begging. Your pictures are. So Jericho. Um, Jericho is a walled city. It's a city that's made of wall. It's literally walled all around. And I, I, I wanted to get you guys a picture of this, but I couldn't find one I like. But I, I need you to get this in your holy imagination, that there is literally a wall, a big giant wall, maybe some people say three to six feet across. And then there's an embankment. There's a space. Some people say that's three acres. And then there's another wall. And this is how the city is walled in, okay? And the soldiers of that city would ride around in their chariots around that embankment just to make sure nobody found their way over the first wall. So if you made your way over the first wall, you hear me right here, then they, you have to deal with the soldiers right here before you can even make your way over the next wall. I'm, I'm trying to help you right here because this is where some of y'all been in your life. You got over one wall and now you're dealing with the soldiers that are, are right here and you're trying to get over the next wall and you keep saying, God, when, when, is it, when am I going to be free? When am I going to be able to just have and possess the land that you promised to me without going wall over wall over wall? So, 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 so he says, he says, he says, you guys are going to take Jericho. And I love that Joshua never rebuts. He never, he, Joshua's one of those, he like, he like, let's go, man. Oh, you, you ever had one of those friends that'll just fight? Yeah. <laughs> you ever had one of those friends you like? Some of y'all say, yeah, because that's you, you the friend. It's me. I'm the one who, I'm the friend. It's me, I'm the friend, I like to fight. Joshua <laughs> oh don't get it twisted I know who my Joshua's are in here don't even get it. you don't know now but you go fine okay all right so Joshua is one of those he loves to fight He's got a certain level of tenacity. Now, I want to help you right here because some of y'all, you have that same tenacity, that, that, that bull doggedness in you. You got it. You got it in you, and it keeps getting you in trouble. Some of the wives was like, yeah, Lord, uh, yeah, yeah. Amen, Pastor. <laughs> But I want to be serious. I want to keep it 100 here. Because this is why you keep losing jobs. Because you, everything's an offense. This is why you don't have any friends. Everything's an offense. Everything's a, I got to fight. Listen. Listen. Fighting can't be the only language you speak. 
Some of y'all need to learn the language of peace. 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 I come in. Peace. I didn't mean to offend you. I come in. Peace. I tell y'all all the time about my, 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 one of my favorite cousins. Big time gangster dude. Hard. I'm telling y'all, I get him in trouble. I get him to catch a case if I tell you all about his life. One day we were playing around, joking around. He had on some nice shoes, too. He had on some nice shoes. They was white. DB, they was white, white. They was brand new white. And, and, and I had on some nice shoes that was white, white. And we was playing around. And he kept saying, don't step on my shoes. Don't step on my shoes. And then he fell and stepped on my shoes. But I only speak one language. No, I just. <laughs> Something about the East Terrace came out, and I pushed them. I pushed them good. I pushed them, and then I had to think about who I pushed. <laughs> you know how you push somebody and then try to catch them? <laughs> I tried to catch them. And then my gangster cousin turned around, looked at me and said, I'm sorry. If he can do it, if he could say I'm sorry, it didn't take nothing off of him. It was no sweat. He was just, I'm sorry. He said it just like that too in a high pitch voice. I walked away. I was like, you better be sorry. But I, wanna, I want you to hear something because there's some Joshua's in this room and you speak that language and every time somebody, you know, mm, 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 can I help my church? Some of the most abrasive ones of y'all are the ones who always offended. You the most abrasive. You, but that's what, the reason you're offended is because you speak that language. So you know, as soon as they start talking to you, you Start raising them levels. I'm just, if you're a visitor here, I just got to help my church real quick. I'm going to get to some good scripture. Just wait one second. Uh, but <laughs> at some point, nobody wins. Everybody's offended. Nobody wins. And you got, you got to watch when you, when you know that your native language is, I'm going to knock you out. That's a, you got to be careful when that's your native language. Do y'all hear me today? Okay, okay, and that's Joshua's native language. So God comes to Joshua, and he says this. He says, hey, there's a city that y'all need to take. And Joshua says, cool, let's do it. Because all he knows how to do is fight. All he knows how to do is wrestle. All he knows, he's born for it. But God says, no, 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 I need you to follow my instructions. Don't fight. What I want you to do is just gather all your men and just walk around the city. Now, I'm sure Joshua's thinking, players. <laughs> All I need is a long pole. I could get over that wall. <laughs> I could pole vault over that wall. Like this, because this is the language he speaks. But God says, no, 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 no. I, I need you to walk around in silence. I need you to walk around in silence. Boy, man, boy, that's, whew. You know, it hurt right here when somebody offends you. And you don't say nothing back. Yeah. Whew. Start getting abdominal pain. <laughs> Ooh, she don't know who she talking to. <laughs> Woo. She don't know me. God said, no, just walk around. Just walk around it. Just walk around it. Just walk around it. So I, I, I want to tell you, I want to I connect these because this is the first major city. This is the first major battle that they're going to have as a new army, as a new army of Israel. And your first battle matters. How you deal with your first battle will reverberate throughout your life. How you dealt with your first conflict. See, some people in here, they, they, this last 10 minutes, what I've been talking about, they have no idea about that. Because they never dealt with conflict in that way. They know how to break down conflict and they know how to apologize. Ooh. You know, it hurts your feelings to say, I'm, I'm sorry for what I said, but I'm not sorry. I meant. <laughs> but.
But how you face, hear, hear me right here, how you face your first fight will reverberate throughout the rest of your eternity. Your Jericho is significant. Somebody say, my Jericho is significant. It's vital to my story. See, you think what happens in Jericho stays in Jericho. <laughs> like what happens in Vegas. Or like what happens in your DMs. I'm loading up. I got another one. I'm just waiting for y'all to finish that one. Or what happened in that text message between you and them? Or what happened in your car? Hear me right here. You was on fire. And you think that stays there, but it doesn't. It reverberates. Because as soon as you get home and then your husband say, hey, where you been? Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> if I only know how to deal in this arena. Are y'all with me today? I'm trying to make this practical for y'all. And then we, we, we'll show. Let me get to do this practical stuff. You think what happens in Jericho stays in Jericho, but it doesn't. It's in your spirit now. You carry it in your spirit. So your Jericho fight is so important. What happened in Jericho, I want y'all to understand this, define them for the, rest of their, for the rest of their life. What happened in Jericho, when they, when they won in Jericho, here's the punchline, they, already, they won, okay? They won in Jericho. When they won in Jericho, everybody else didn't even put up a fight. Because like, if, you, if you could ask for forgiveness in one place, if you, could, if you could be nice in one place, if you could have a sweet spirit in one place, if you could just walk around it. You all just need to learn how to, you got, the problem is here. You just got to walk around it. The issue is here. You got to walk. You don't have to go through every single problem. Does that make sense? Okay, okay, because I need you to get this. And you can write this down. This matters. You will always be defined by what you defeated. Does that make sense? I'm always going to be defined by what I defeated. I'm always going to be defined by what I faced, fought, and defeated. Okay? So if, if people know you, if people only know you for having this attitude, oh, I'm going to get off this. If people only know you for, for being this kind of abrasive person, then they'll, they'll deal with you in the way that they know you. Does that make sense? But if I learn how to just walk around, oh, Jesus. Okay, okay. So, 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 so what happens, what happens in Jericho doesn't stay in Jericho. What happens in Jericho becomes habit. Are y'all with me? Now, what happens when what happened because, becomes your habit? What happens when what happened becomes your habit? I'll help you here. Stop being defined by your history. Stop being defined by what happened. Stop being defined by who you used to date. Stop being defined by how you used to act, by who you used to be. That you no longer that person. You can tell people, no, I want to introduce you to the new me. I'm no longer that person anymore. I'm not going to be defined by what happened. Does that make sense? Okay. So now they start to walk around Jericho. And, 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 and here we go. That was my introduction. Okay. Got five minutes, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> so, no, I'm kidding. That wasn't, I'm, I'm good. We, we marked it. Okay. Oh, so they start to walk around Jericho. Somebody say walk around Jericho. Walk around Jericho. They start to walk around Jericho and they do this for six days. They just walk around Jericho. They do this for six days. Now, I, I explained to you before that this is outside of Joshua's na nature. He does not want to do this. But sometimes obedience will get you further than tenacity will. Oh, I said something. Obedience will get me further than tenacity will. Obedience will get me further than tenacity will because obedience breaks walls down. Okay? Obedience breaks walls down. Obedience to who? Obedience to the words of God. If I can be obedient to the word of God, then I can see the walls that are falling down in my life. If I can be obedient until the wall falls, then God said he, he promised me he'll knock down every single one. But the question is, can you remain faithful? 
Can you remain obedient to what God spoke to you? Can you remain obedient to the promise that he gave you when it's monotonous, when it feels like I'm not getting anywhere, when it feels like I'm not achieving anything? Can I stay faithful to the word that God gave me? And when it looks like somebody else is passing me up, oh, Jesus, when it looks like all, them other, all these other people getting little raises and all kinds of stuff, and God saying, no, no, just be obedient. Just be faithful. Just be faithful. Just be faithful to that wife. Give her some time to mature. Just be faithful to that husband. Give, give, give him some time to get, get to know me better, to have a relationship. Can you just be faithful? I, I, I deal with this more than anything. Just got married yesterday, want a divorce today. Be faithful. What have you been faithful to? What have you been consistent with? Your resume look like Swiss cheese. <laughs> you see, I figured y'all need to stay on that one for a second. What, what is it? What is, you, you, you say, oh, I just can't find no good friends. Maybe you're not a good friend. They walk faster now. Feel the bricks. Feel the brick spirit coming out. I told y'all this thing. I need a bigger. What is, what is it that God keeps telling you to do and stay faithful and stay and keep doing it and stay faithful to it? And you keep saying, well, I, I'll try again. Oh, I'll try again. Oh, I'll try again. I, I, I'll let y'all laugh at me a little bit. I've been on keto for 10 years. Every day I'm like, I'll start tomorrow. <laughs> I tried to do good yesterday. I got ranch with my wings. Tab got gravy with hers. I was like, I'd like some gravy. <laughs> she can eat what she want to eat. She stay fine. I'm, I'm going my fate. As soon as I eat anything, I, my face swollen in the mirror. I'm like, oh. start doing what y'all do. Put that dark stuff on them. <laughs> I don't know where I'm at. Okay, I'm back. I got to get back to the work. Okay, okay. Can you be faithful? Can you be faithful? Can you be faithful? Until you see the results of what you've been praying for. Does it matter enough? For you to stay faithful to it. Does it matter enough for you to stay consistent with it? Or, or, or will you just try again tomorrow? Tomorrow, tomorrow, everything's tomorrow, tomorrow. No, no, no. If you can learn to be patient until the wall fall down and faithful to the wall fall down and steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in him to the wall fall down, you'll see more walls fall down. Are y'all with me today? I want to say this also. Obedience destroys obstacles. So, so, so the more I'm obedient, all of a sudden things that were difficult for me, as I stay, as I stay uh, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in him, those things become easier. Obedience destroys your obstacles. But every, every, everyone in this, in this time we live in, they, they want to take on obstacles without actually taking on obstacles. What's that mean? Well, everybody's got something to say. But who's actually going out to do the work? Everybody's got a speech about, oh, did you, this thing or that thing or this, this injustice or that injustice. But ask them to do something. Ask them to do something consistently, to do something faithful. We always talk about the Martin Luther King March. I'm, I'm going to get off this. We always talk about the Martin Luther King March. Do you realize that that wasn't just one march one time? They were consistently marching all over the place. They were marching in Selma, marching in D.C. They were marching in Alabama. They were marching all over the place. If, if, if you can only do one march, take a selfie and go home, nothing's ever going to change. Are y'all with me today? 
but I'm looking for some people who's got a Joshua spirit, who's got a tenacity spirit, who said, if God told me to walk around this thing, I'm just going to walk around this thing. And if God told me that this is, this is my family, this is my wife, I'm going to water what God told me to water. I'm going to take care of what God told me to take care of. I'm going to be consistent in the place that God promised me. Are y'all with me today? Can you do something that seems fruitless until it's fruitful? Can you do something and just say, God said it, I believe it, that settles it, I'm going to stay right. Are y'all with me today? But, but, but God, I love this, but because God has not forgotten about you. Some of y'all are in a place where you've been walking around it and walking around it and walking around it. And God said, no, 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 I'm right, I'm right there. I'm right there. And if you can get to the seventh day, hear me right here. If you can get to the seventh day, then something happens. This is what I need you to understand. Whatever God says is the, is the thing, is the thing. What's that mean, Pastor Dante? Whatever God says is the goal, is the goal. If he says get to the seventh day, you got to get to the seventh day. You're not going to get a half a blessing on the sixth day. You got to get all the way to where he told you to get. Are y'all with me today? You got to get faithful and consistent to where he told you to get. He said, walk around it for six days. And on, on the seventh day, walk around it seven times. And the whole time, just be quiet. Just be quiet. They see you. That hammer's ringing. Just, some of y'all took what I said last week as, uh, I can go brag. No, God said, just be quiet. The hammer's ringing. They see you. Ain't nobody move in and out of the... Listen, there, there's a blessing that's stored up for you that can't nobody have. Oh, I thought that would bless somebody in here. There's a blessing that's stored up for you and nobody can have it. So they get to the seventh day. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody, somebody, I need, I need three people over here and three people over here. So they get to the seventh day. They get to the seventh... Well, that's good. Three and three. Y'all Okay. All right, y'all look good, too. Look at you. Some handsome people up here, man. <laughs> of course. So they get, somebody said, get to the seventh day. The problem for most of us is that we quit on the sixth day. You, you get so close. You get so, ask me how I know, because I pastor you. You get so close to a breakthrough. And then you're like... I need a break. Okay. 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 I'll give you your break, but you might miss your miracle. Stay steadfast. Oh, PD, I need to take some, uh, stay steadfast. Now, some of y'all, yeah, you need some time off. Do what you got to do. Take care of your family. Your priority is whatever is in that circle. Okay? But what I'm telling you right here is don't quit. Don't always give up. Me and my wife, we just took giving up out of the equation. We just don't, we just not going to give up. That's it, okay? Y'all got to get to that place. When they get to the seventh day, they got to the seventh day, and he said on the seventh day, take seven priests and line them up across the front. Now, I need you to understand something. Six is the number of man. Say that. Six is the number of man. Six is the number of men. So, so, so when God, when, when God says seven, what he's saying is, I, I need you to get beyond your ability. I need you to get beyond who you are. You tried everything. You tried to fix it. You tried to change it. You tried to turn it around. You tried to turn him around. I mean, but God said, I need you to get past your ability. I need to get into your inability. When you get in your inability, that's when you're in God's ability. Do y'all understand? God is never going to do in your life what you have the power to do. You can write that down, take a picture or something. God never going to do in your life what he's given you power to do. So if you're asking him to intervene, it's because you've gone beyond your capability. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. You've gone beyond your capabilities into his abilities. Does that make sense? So I wondered about this because as I think about the six days and the, and the, and the, and the troops are marching around for six days, once every day for six days, and then on seven days, they march around six times before anything happens. And then when they get beyond themselves, right beyond the 
six. God said, put seven priests up here. Lord have mercy. Bring, so y'all get in a little bit closer. Bring seven priests up here. And then when you put the seven priests up here, those priests have a responsibility. Let's lock arms here. Those priests have a responsibility. Now, understand something. There's three over here. There's three over here. Ooh, y'all so smart, boy. <laughs> There's three over here and three over here. That represents man. But God put a man in the middle. As a representation of not man, of, uh, as a representation of who he is. And if you really think about your life, there's a man in the middle. There is somebody who's got it all under control. You don't have to worry about it. You keep fretting about it. You keep working. God said, get past your ability. And, there, and if you look around, there's a man in the middle. He said, and then when y'all step. Step at the same time. Step with the man. Oh, Jesus, hear me right here. Some of y'all, are, let's take a step back. Y'all step up a little bit. Y'all step forward. Keep going. Keep, not y'all. This is your relationship with God. Wow. Come on, God. Come on, God. I'm trying to, come on, take me where I'm trying to go, God. And this is, and God keeps saying, no, 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 step back. Step back. Step back. Step with me. If you step with me, everything changes. One, two, three, step. If you step with me, everything gets better. One, two, three, step. If you step with me, look, y'all got scared. I'm still stepping with the same foot. Y'all know. Because I'm God. I'm not God. God's God. Okay. Y'all step back. Y'all step back one more time. So, so what you got to do is get your step right. I believe God spent six days helping them to get their steps right. I believe that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by, thank y'all so much. I believe that God spent six days just helping them get their step right. And you keep tripping, but God's just saying, I'm just putting order to you. If you can just get your steps right, if all of a sudden you can get your steps right, I can do it. I can fix it. The wall will fall down, but you got to get your, so he says, look, He says, look, 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 look. He says, he says, he says, if you can get your steps right, if you can get your steps right, then I need you to do one more thing. Somebody say one more thing. One more thing. thing. This is what I need you to do. When you hear the sound of the horn, he said the sound of the horn is supposed to let you know that, that, that the silence is over, that the depression is over that the anxiety is over he says now he says this he says when you hear the horn the horn's not the end all be all the horn is an alert to let you know that it's your time to shout are y'all with me today somebody look at somebody and say i think it's our turn to shout He said, when you get to that place that's beyond your ability, when you get to that place where I've ordered your steps, when you get to that place where where whatever you thought wasn't working, God said, all you have to do is lift up a shout. All you got to do is lift up a shout. When you hear that horn, When you hear that horn, when you hear that horn, when you hear that, when you hear that horn, I don't think y'all hear me. I don't, I don't think y'all hear me. Listen, he said. right here hear me right here I need y'all to hear me right here listen the horn is a victory horn well Dominique why would I blow a victory horn before I got the victory the Bible says on the seventh day when you walked around seven times when you're outside of your ability What I want you to do is praise me like you already won. What I want you to do 
and shout like you've already won. I want you to shout like it's already over, like God's already did it, like you've already got the victory. Come on and lift up a shout of praise. What you don't understand is that something happens when a sound is released. When there is a sound of desperation. God has to respond to the sound. One day my wife and I were walking out of the daycare after dropping our kids off. Hundreds of kids in a day. All of a sudden we heard somebody whine loud. Whine loud. I said, oh, that little boy, he's going through something. Cap said, no, that's Dominic. I said, no, no, it's a lot of babies in here. How you know? She said, I know. That's my baby. I, we got to go back. We got to turn around. We got to see about him. That, we got to go see. And, and what I want you to know here is that when you release that sound, God says, no, that's my baby. I got to go see about my baby. I got to go see what's going on. And oftentimes, the reason God hasn't intervened in your life is because you haven't let off an alert to let God know it's the time now God I'm ready it's time now God I'm ready I'm ready I'm wondering if one or two people in here can just release a sound that says God I'm ready for the miracle I'm ready for you to do it I'm ready for the miracle I'm ready, God. I'm ready, God. I'm ready, God. I'm ready, God. I'm ready. Now, I had an issue with this because they said only the priest could blow the horn. Come on, y'all can come with me. Y'all can come with me. I said, they said only the priest could blow the horn. And I kept saying, well, well, then, well, God, that, that, that takes the responsibility off the people. He said, oh, no, no, no. On the cross. On the cross, I ordained some priests. He said, when I died on the cross, when I gave up the ghost, when I gave up my life, and I want y'all to know something else. When he gave up his life, the Bible says he did it with a shout. He said, he said when I gave up my life, what happened is the, the veil that separated you from me, the veil that made it, that made some of us priests and some of us paupers, he said the veil was torn away. And while they were beating me and while they were bruising me and while, they, uh, and while I was bleeding, they didn't realize that the veil was ripping. And all of a sudden things that you didn't have a right to, places and areas that you didn't have a right to, God says now you have a right. Blow your trumpet, blow your horn, and watch what God does in your... Come on, I just need one or two. Can we release a sound in here? Come on, Jericho. 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 Release a sound in here. Release a sound that'll shake your community. Release a sound that'll change your family. Release a sound that'll make the walls fall down. Release a sound in here. Release a sound in here. Release a sound in here. God says some of y'all too quiet for a miracle. Some of y'all too quiet for a breakthrough. I'm just looking for one or two who said, I won't be quiet. I won't be silent. Come on, if that's you today, I want to do something crazy. If you said, God, I won't be silent. I won't be quiet. I need some walls to fall in my life. I want you to just start walking around right where you are. I just want you to start taking some territory. I, I want you to get out of your seat. I want you to get out of your seat. Come on. Can we give God praise? Can we give God praise? 
as we take territory. should also rest on the seventh day I said so God how'd you knock the walls down if you were resting he said I had already knocked the walls down before the foundations of the earth I had already set it into place God is not working on your miracle your miracle is waiting on you come on give God praise all over somebody and say I didn't do it God did it for me I didn't knock the walls down God knocked the walls down for me so I could just say you made a way when my back was against and it looked as if you, you say, may. Now, give your testimony. Say, because you move, you move mountains. Come on, you cause what?
building. I've seen you do. This is only if you believe, say, I've seen you move. You move the mountains. Say, I believe. And I believe. I see you do. I see you do it. You made a way. You made a way. When there was no way. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, this is the moment, this is the time you said that you believe, you sang that you believe. Now we need you to take one more t a step of faith and say, yes, I do believe. I do believe. So I'm going to say a prayer and I want you to repeat after me. We're all going to say it so you don't feel like you're being alienated. We're not going to pick on you. God's picking you out in this season. So repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you for forgiving me. I am yours. I am yours. Come into my life and change my life. Come into my heart and change my heart. Today, I am new. Today, I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now do me one more favor. On the count of three, I want you to lift your hands as high as you can saying, yes, PK, I believe. Oh, y'all already raising your hands? Oh, you're already raising your hands? One, two, three. Go ahead and lift your hands. Charisma. Charisma. Let's go. Find you somebody and pray for them. God chase us. You give your great God a great big praise and tell him thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 God changes. Give God a praise right now. People are coming to the kingdom. Their lives are being saved. Their lives are being changed. And they believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God changes. Amen. 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 Let, me get, let me hear you give a round of applause. Amen. Woo, did y'all get, get a good word today, God changes? Yes. I can't hear.